Next year marks the 100th anniversary of perhaps the most famous peacetime maritime disaster of all times. The RMS Titanic was on its maiden voyage from England to New York when it struck an iceberg and sank, killing over 1,500 passengers. Now, the event has been recounted in print and in movies, but now you can get an almost realistic first-hand experience. All you have to do is take a trip by land to Pigeon Forge. It was the largest and most luxurious passenger ship in the world when it left Southampton in England, bound for New York in April 1912. It surpassed all rival ships in luxury and opulence. Four days into its maiden Atlantic voyage, wireless messages were sent but never received. Warning of icebergs in the Titanic's path. Captain Edward Smith was caught off guard when the ship suddenly struck a large iceberg, resulting in the deadliest peacetime maritime disaster. More than half of the 2,227 passengers perished in the icy waters. Just off the main Pigeon Forge Parkway, the $25 million Titanic Museum is a unique half-scale reproduction of the doomed vessel. Once inside, expect an interactive experience, not like a lot of museums you've been to, and one that's well, all about the passengers. Thank you very much. In fact, you don't get a ticket when you get aboard. You get a real boarding pass and you become one of those passengers. Every single passenger and crew member aboard the Titanic's name and fates are listed on that wall. John Jocelyn is co-owner and a veteran TV producer, the first to film the wreckage after it was discovered in the mid-1980s. This is a reproduction of the ship's grand staircase. Uh, surprisingly, we have every bit of plans that came off Titanic. So the detail in here, I, I can't tell you. It, it, we have a head designer named Bob Fleming, and he's just, he's a fanatic about details. People come in here and they go, Wow, real wood. Yeah, it's real wood. <laughs> While the museum is dedicated to the 1,517 passengers who lost their lives, there are also more than 400 artifacts in 20 galleries. That life jacket up there is the only life jacket that we can actually tie a person's name to, and it was Madeline Astor. She was one of the fortunate survivors who enjoyed accommodations in the first class suite. And there's a reproduction of one of them, but there's also an authentic replica of a third class cabin as well. This gallery contains rare photos taken by a man named Father Brown who deboarded the ship in Ireland just before the tragedy. Luckily, he got off in Queenstown and he was an amateur photographer. Otherwise, we would have very, very little archived photos of it. You go to that gallery and you look at these people and you see people standing on a dock with one suitcase. That's all they own. Everything they own in the world was in that little tiny suitcase. And you go, wow, this is a different place. <laughs> when you get such a cross-section of life and they came from every race, color, creed, and religion, and they really take you back, they do. I mean, to this day, I can tell some stories and it'll bring a tear to my eye because it captures you what these people had to go through. Because not only were they very rich and very poor on board, but there was people on board who didn't speak any English. There was a person from Japan on board. There was Irish on board. Plus, you had children. You had dogs. You had a rooster. It made up a floating city, and uh, no one thought anything like this could ever sink. It did. Five days. And while on board, you may get a feeling of what it was like when water came rushing into the ship's hallways just minutes after striking the iceberg. It's also a very interactive museum that even engages visitors with hands-on experiences related to the fabled ship. What am I trying to do here? Now, yeah, what you're going to do <laughs> here is we want you to try to steer around this iceberg. Port side. Right ahead. Okay, now okay. we gotta go. You got 35 seconds. Is this here. got power right. steering. Keep going. Yeah, <laughs> it was all mechanical. Big rods went all the way down to the rudder. You got 20 seconds. Yeah, you're getting. You look good. All right, we might Woo. miss this iceberg. Yeah, nine. So you can't miss it. Eight, seven, six. Uh oh. Uh oh. We got a drift there. Uh oh. Looks like we're gonna get a little ice. 
Congratulations. All right. Very good. Wow, thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> thank you. I wish I could have, I'm saved. I could have helped out back then, but it didn't. Mm -hmm. We want to show people what it was like. This was at 1.50 a.m. Okay. What was the slope of the day? That's not not too, too bad. bad. You can make, make your way idea. around that ship. 15 minutes later, and now you're going to a 30 degree slope. And now you're only going to go another 13 minutes, and now you're at 45 degrees. And this is a challenge all of a sudden. Yes. And you know the best part, Joe, you have leather shoes on and that's what they had in them. They, oh, they didn't have no tennis way. shoes. This, this really gives you yeah, a this, feeling. Yeah, this does give you a real feeling of what they went through. You would definitely slide down that deck yeah, real quick. Yeah, I'd be in the water by now. Yeah. This room is all about John's exploration as he shares what he saw in his voyage to the bottom of the ocean to film the wreckage. What was the first thing you saw when you turned the lights on and you could reveal some of that? Well, honestly, you don't see very much. All you see really is the floor of the ocean. Surprisingly, that ocean floor down here, it's a very hard surface. There's just a little touch of dust on it, but there's really no sand or anything like that. But the debris field is always interesting because people here don't realize that the bow and stern are separated by over a quarter of a mile. I mean, the whole debris field is about two and a half miles in diameter. It takes about two hours to take in the Titanic Museum and to experience the symbol of early 20th century technology. The hopes of immigrants, the luxury of the elite, and the tragedy shared aboard a ship that builders said could never sink. Titanic has its own mystique. Every day there's a brand new audience. Someone else gets captured up by the stories and the emotions of it. And it's, it's just a timeless tale.